to just tell you a, a tiny bit about uh, myself and what brings me to this, and then we're going to kind of jump right into this subject matter. So I am from Colorado. Um, I've been doing this kind of work for about 23 years, actually, in the area of sexual assault and domestic violence. And when I kind of grew up, or tried to, and uh, went to college and studied psychology, I did an internship at a place called the Family Crisis Center, where they would take kids out of the home in police custody and take them to an anonymous place so that their parents could no longer continue to hurt them. And my job was just to read to the kids and play with the kids and pass some time. And I'll never forget the day that somebody handed me a police report, a police officer who was there said, listen, if you want to understand why little Johnny is here or little Susie is here, read this. And I read in black and white words on a page what had happened to these children that I was helping that day. And I thought, you know, something, it was a defining moment for me. Something in me switched that day. And I thought, you know, I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up, but I will do something to try to prevent this. I will do something to try to really work on this problem because it just hit me as so completely wrong. And so indeed I have. I ended up going to law school and I became a prosecutor. And I started my career in the Denver District Attorney's Office. And when they first start you as a, as a district attorney, as a prosecutor or someone, they kind of stick you where you can't do too much damage. They put you in county court. And county court is where you might see an occasional bar brawl or you know that kind of thing that happened between people. And you form your first impressions about how the legal system works in county court. And I did form an impression. And I thought that basically when you had a crime like that, you had two people that were involved. You had the victim and you had the offender, and that justice would be determined based on what happened between these two people. Well, as they moved me up into that felony district court assignment, which is where the, the more serious crimes were, I realized that I was wrong about this assumption, that it wasn't just the victim and it wasn't just the offender who were involved in these cases, especially as I started doing cases of sexual assault that involved adult victims. I realized that I was wrong about this assumption, that there was actually a third party that was involved in each and every one of the sexual assault cases that I ever tried or ever prosecuted. Now, this third party was not listed in the police reports, didn't show up in the charging document, didn't actually physically go into the court to testify, and didn't go back into the jury room to deliberate. But nonetheless, this party was clear. This third party's existence and influence was clear. So much so that not only were they having an influence over the cases, they were having the lion's share of influence over the outcome of the cases. Their, you know, their influence in these cases was more significant than the victim or the offender or any evidence that, that actually um, presented itself and developed in an actual case. And I thought, boy, I had better get to know this because I was starting to see some really interesting uh, results and verdicts. And I thought, I'd better get to know this third party because this is something that is, is really clearly an influence. And so I actually felt the first thing to do, you're going to get to know something or someone, you give them a name. And so I did. And what I, I call this the, the unnamed conspirator. And this is going to be a kind of a, a tour through the influence of this unnamed conspirator in these kinds of cases, and perhaps even in your lives and your thought processes. My goal for you is to basically leave here having examined the way that you think about sexual assault and the kinds of, of uh, issues that, that come out of that. Um, by the time you leave this room. And I'll give you lots of opportunities to do that.